This year, Arizona faced a budget crater to rival its own Grand Canyon, a deficit of nearly $2 billion. Arizona communities anticipated cuts in schools. The state already ranks 50th in the nation in per-pupil spending. From there, Tucson schools took another hit this fall, 10%. What happens when a major recession hits public education? How do schools survive when times are tough? Who gets hurt more, the rich or the poor? We went to Tucson to find out. We started here in Tucson's affluent east side, a comfortable suburban community. Gale Elementary School has an excellent reputation. Veteran teachers, a high-performing student body, and a commitment to the arts. Here you go, Michaela. In the cafeteria, everything looks normal. How was lunch? Good. Good. Except that Paula Godfrey is the school principal, forced into kitchen duty, she says, because of budget cuts. How, how, how does that feel to be uh, number 50? I mean, Terrible. When you're 50th in the nation in per pupil spending, there's a lot of things that you cut out of education. Principal Godfrey says she lost $140,000 this year. What did you lose? We lost our office manager. Uh, we were able to keep our attendance registrar, but the difference between keeping the office manager or the attendance registrar was exactly the amount we needed for orchestra. Meet Gail's new office manager. I do the payroll. I do all the requisitions. I do all of the arranging for substitutes. Think, win, win. Enrollment is up. Over 400 students attend grades kindergarten through fifth, but funding is not. Because its students are mostly middle class, Gail qualifies for little federal money. And so we're a school that relies on just that 50th level spending. Gail has few amenities. There's no gym. This is the auditorium. The computers are out of date. Extras like marching band have disappeared. Gail also made cuts in the classroom. Tutors and aides were let go, and classes are bigger. I have 31 students, and as of yesterday, we'll actually, for half of the day, have 32 students in our classroom. Second grade teacher Kim Swab says in previous years, her classes had an average of 24 students. And, you know, the extra five, six, seven children makes a really big difference. Think of a better word, like a really smart word. At a second grade level, they need a lot of individual attention. And there definitely are children who are falling through the cracks. There's no question about that. What's happening at Gale is happening at schools in other hard-hit states. And although Arizona public schools receive $473 million in federal stimulus funding, that has not been enough to fill all the gaps. But in its struggle to survive, Gale has an ace in the hole. Have you volunteered this month before? Parents. They're everywhere. We average between 5,000 and 6,000 thousand hours a year of volunteer time. That's the equivalent of three full-time workers for a year. And that's not all. We ask for copy paper, we ask for pencils, we ask for erasers, we ask for soap, we ask for everything. And? They came through miraculously. I don't know what we would have done without them. You need to sit on your bottom. Gail and its teachers are working overtime to make sure they can keep on doing what they have been doing. They've been lucky compared to other Tucson schools. Take 90-year-old Ochoa Elementary. It serves a poor, largely Hispanic population, but not very well. Scores were low and enrollment was dropping, and that made it a target. Please stand up and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Looking to save money, the district put it on a list of schools to be closed. You think, what worse thing can happen to a school? than school closure. Heidi Aranda is Ochoa's principal. You know, whenever you're in a crisis like that, it forces you to re-examine. I said, we need to think about our enrollment. And what would it take to increase our enrollment? What do you like that could be this hair? She's found what she hopes is the answer. Here. Pick with the tongue things that you think would be good for hair. A teacher, Pauline Baker, had just introduced a method from Italy called Reggio Emilia in her preschool class. 
In a nutshell, the metaphor for Reggio is that children have a hundred languages for learning. There are lots of things to pick from. Reggio is guided by the idea that children learn best by doing. Everything about a Reggio classroom is planned, from the lighting to the music to the materials for children. You need to cut. You can cut if you want to. People think this is about art and that this is an art studio, but really the studio is a place for inventing ways to do things. What will be your nose? Soon parents told Principal Aranda that it was their favorite class. Then Tucson's new superintendent came to see what all the fuss was about. I was shocked. It really took me back. To? To just, just see what, it, what was possible. You know, I just kind of had to pause and say, you know, what a difference this makes in, in learning. Boys and girls, Kayla's going to look at hers now. It turned out to make all the difference to Ochoa. Tell me about what you used and how you put them together. Circles. Circles. For With community parents. support, Principal Aranda proposed to model the whole school on the Reggio approach. The plans to shut it down were put aside. This is a chin. Is it your hope that converting the school this way will attract parents from other parts of Tucson? Yes. Yes, it is a, a definite goal and strategy to um, increase the enrollment in our school. This year, Ochoa opened a Reggio kindergarten. Next year, first grade. It will add a grade each year until the entire school is converted. Meanwhile, classes like this fine arts class and this class in gardening have adopted the approach. Now, suppose... Ochoa you know, liberates learning, and the kids love it, and the parents love it. But on those very narrow tests, they don't do well. What then? Well, we've looked into schools across the country that have actually transformed themselves and taken a more progressive, you know, stance. And actually, the students do better. How long have you been here? Were you here when they were thinking about closing yes. it? Or you can, yes. so you, Ochoa's new approach, born in crisis, is attracting visitors. Guys, it's gorgeous including U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan in October. I love it. It's phenomenal. You should be proud. <laughs> but the attention and an improved performance rating from the state may not be enough to assure its survival. Like other Tucson schools, Ochoa lost 10 percent of its budget, over $100,000, and had to let two teachers go. It could get worse. In January, when Arizona state legislature reconvenes, more cuts are expected.